Good morning. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to be batting leadoff in the town of the uh, world champion Astros. So, um. <laughs> okay. So we'll talk about uh, climate, climate change, and climate modeling, and we'll first talk about uh, what is climate. We'll just run through some of the the basics first, and of course, when I ask people what is climate. Most people tell me that uh, climate is long-term averages, all right? And people generally know how that differs from weather. And when I talk to the public, I say, well, yes, weather is basically what is happening now, or what we've got. And it's the day-to-day -day state of the atmosphere, if we want to use a book definition. And of course, we can talk even more uh, technically about how we describe weather. But climate, of course, is the long-term mean state of the Earth atmosphere system. Again, this is more of a book definition, uh, one that I give my classes. But you also have to look at other statistics, statistics that describe variations or that describe the recurrence of certain, uh, um, certain uh, events. So climate involves a lot of statistics. And when we say long term, we generally think about that in terms of 30 years, because 30 years is long enough that uh, we can smooth out year to year variations. But at the same time, it's uh, short enough that people can actually uh, observe climate and climate change. All right. So when we take a look at the Earth atmosphere system, Again, it's a composite system that's composed of the atmosphere, oceans, land, and ice-covered uh, regions of the world. And we basically know how the internal dynamics of the oceans and atmosphere works, and even the ice uh, sphere. But where we're unclear is how these things interact with each other. And of course, the sun is the uh, ultimate in, uh, input of energy into this system. And again, my research is kind of biased toward the atmosphere side of this. So, uh, and most people's understanding of climate is on the atmosphere side. So we'll keep the uh, discussion there today. And when we talk about climate change, climate change is any change in the statistical character of climate. So you don't need to see a change in average conditions to talk about climate change. And an example I can give is in precipitation. Uh, maybe you get to three inches of rain in a month, and in previous times you got that in six events, and now you get that in two events. That's still a change in climate. All right, and of course changes in climate are changes that occur on longer periods than 30 years. Now, some key issues regarding climate change. All right, does climate change occur on all time scales, or are there preferred scales? And of course, the answer to this is that there are preferred scales, but climate has been changing since the world began, as we know. All right, if we look back way back in time after the asteroid, but uh, about the time of the dinosaurs uh, were ending, climate was much warmer and the continents were in different positions. All right, and of course, climate changed over the years. The amount of CO2 in the atmosphere changed. And by 20 million years ago, the, climate, the continents moved into the positions they're at and Antarctica began to ice over, all right? So Antarctica's not been ice covered very long in terms of geologic time. And then we know that there's been changes uh, in climate in the last 500,000 years associated with the ice ages, which we can tie to variations in the Earth's revolution around the sun and variations in its axis tilt as well as orientation. And we're even discovering that there's changes in the orbital plane of the Earth relative to uh, flat with respect to the sun to a little bit tilted with respect to the sun. And these things drive the ice ages. 
There's even been climate change since the last ice age. We're well familiar with some of the variations, the Holocene optimum, a period of time where we felt that the North Pole didn't have any ice. And of course, there's the Minoan maximum, there's the maximum, the Roman optimum, uh, which is associated with the rise of the Roman Empire. And of course, the Holocene maximum is associated with a time when uh, humans began agriculture. And I think that's a, a good thing. Most of us think it's a good thing. <laughs> Climate change in the last 2,000 years. All right, we're familiar with the Little Ice Age. And of course, that ended in the 1800s, and we're now pulling out of that. And of course, we're familiar with decadal scale climate change, which has been occurring in the 20th century, the warming of the earlier 20th century and the warming of the late 20th century. And recently, we've seen a hiatus from that change, a couple of bumps with respects to some strong El Ninos, but climate change seems to have preferred scales from decadal to millennial. And it's perfectly natural. So when somebody says to me, do I believe in climate change? I say, no, I don't. I accept that climate changes. And I accept that it's always changed and will always change in the future. So I don't believe in it at all. Belief implies faith in something unseen. We know that climate changes. Is climate change global or regional? All right, that's a hard question to answer because the global circulations are all interconnected and one of the ways they're connected is through the jet stream. All right, and, but if you look at uh, climate change in detail on Earth, there are some differences across the different regions. For example, we know that warming in the last uh, 30 years has occurred more strongly in the Arctic regions, although that's not universally true, all right? And regional climate change is something I've been studying for a while. This comes from one of my papers, uh, studying climate in Southwest Russia, where they've seen tremendous warming. Uh, but not much change in precipitation in the last uh, century. And I compare that with climate change in our region. If you look at uh, the right graph, that's the Missouri region, the annual temperatures have not changed much in the 20th century. All right, even though the uh, winter periods have warmed a bit and summer periods have actually cooled, so. And of course, when we look at regional issues, we can look at uh, extreme phenomena like tornadoes and tornadoes in our region have, at least the severe ones have gone down. And you can look at uh, changes in hurricane occurrence across the Atlantic Basin, the Pacific Basin and worldwide, there's been very little change in hurricane activity. But in both of those graphs, you can see significant cyclical activity. So climate change is regional. It also may be global. And of course, we're familiar with future scenarios that uh, purport to tell us about doom and gloom by 2100. But even in those uh, graphs there, or those uh, figures there, you see different regional effects for climate change, stronger warming in the Arctic, except near Greenland, and changes in precipitation pattern. And again, uh, that's if you believe that CO2 is the main culprit. All right, is climate change forced by external forces? And, or is it forced by things internally? And I think the answer to that is yes. <laughs> Both are very important. And of course, we've talked about some of the external factors already, but there are internal factors like uh, ocean temperature changes that create things like the Pacific Decadal Oscillation or the North Atlantic Oscillation and El Nino and those kind of things are internal. All right, let's talk a little bit about climate models and I'll just tell you what a general circulation model is and a general circulation model is a hypothesis. It's not the real atmosphere, although there are some scientists that 
like to think it is. All right. And these general circulation models solve for the state of the atmosphere. These are essentially souped up or different, differently tasked weather models. All right, so they produce instantaneous data, just like observations. And they can be fairly uh, technically robust. Uh, I'll just show you a schematic of what a climate model looks like. They take the data, import it, put it on a three-dimensional grid, and then run the data forward in time using the primitive equations. And then we parameterize other processes like convection and ocean temperature feedbacks and things like that. But four principles must be observed. Conservation of energy, mass, momentum. All right, these things must be obeyed and these represent seven basic equations. And these form the dynamic core of the model and the model behavior is pretty complicated. All right, we know how the internal behavior works and this was discovered, or this behavior of the equations was discovered when uh, Ed Lorenz was trying to explain the behavior of the jet stream. All right, All right so what, what is it about climate models that makes them difficult? Well, there's things that we have to fake or guess at or parameterize, things like precipitation, clouds, uh, atmosphere, surface interactions, and the like. All right, so what do climate models do well? All right, they are the most comprehensive tools we have to look at climate, all right? And they represent the current general circulation, all right? And they're actually getting better at uh, Mon at uh, representing the general circulation. We're actually seeing some improvement in how they can represent interannual variations. And again, these things are full physics and they have lots of great resolution in the horizontal and the vertical, so we can look at the atmosphere in great detail. So if used correctly, models are a wonderful tool for looking at the possibilities of the future, but also looking back at what past climates may have been like. Now, what don't they do well? They're very costly to run, of course. All right, and as I've shown before, or as I've alluded to, they're pretty uh, technically complicated. All right, they can only give us a projection of the future. They cannot forecast the future. And that's a distinction that I'd be willing to talk about afterwards. <laughs> but you get a massive amount of output with them. So analyzing that is like drinking from a fire hose. All right. And you get a large, you have a large number of things that we have to kind of guess at. And in order for the model to get today's climate right, you need to tune it. If you remember old television sets or radios, where you had to t turn the knob to get the right station in. That's what you have to do with these parameterizations to get the uh, climate model to get today's climate right. And then we can look backwards and look forwards. And these things are not genuine climate models. They solve for weather, all right? All this data solves for weather and then they statistically compile it as if there was climate, all right, as if you were trying to produce a climate. So they're not true climate uh, models in a sense. And that's the end, and thank you for your attention. I did keep it to 15 minutes. I thought I wasn't gonna do it, but uh, I managed to get it in, so thank you.